We're glad to have you here on the show. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. It's always a pleasure to be seated with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're on Facebook, like me, like so many people, make sure you follow them. You can just search for Retirement Education Foundation so you can stay up to date on everything they're doing to help people like you and me get ready for retirement. That's what we talk about here on the show. We're going to tell you a little bit later about how you can get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. These are taught at local universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Oakland. It's either a two-day course or a one-day D deep dive, seven to eight hours, and you can register. We're going to tell you all about that coming up in just a bit. Kirk, Paul, great to be back with you. You know, the number one fear of people in or nearing retirement is running out of money and who can blame them. But you guys say there's some lessons we can learn so that doesn't happen. There are, Megan. So the last, or I should say from 2001 to 2010, some refer to this as the lost decade. And during that period of time, we could learn some very critical lessons for the 10,000 baby boomers who are retiring per day right now, right? So we have a lot of perfect storms that is going to make income planning very challenging for retirees. A lot of people from 2001 through 2010 made critical mistakes. And as a result, they're either not able to live the retirement they had hoped to, or they're going to outlive their money. There's a very strong chance they're going to outlive their money. So one of the things we're going to do today, Paul, is we're going to go through the actual returns, 2001 through 2010, and then we're going to teach you a little bit about mutual fund math. We're going to tell you what the average rate of return was, and all of you are going to say, wait, that can't be true because I didn't make any money from 2001 to 2010. That's why people call it the lost decade. You didn't make any money. But yet, mutual fund math would tell you that you actually earned 3.6% on average, but your portfolios only went up less than 17%, right? Right. That's assuming if people weren't retired. If they were retired, they got crushed early. It takes us right into what we talk about all the time, Paul, sequence of return risk. So I want to take them through all of the different sequences of what happened, how we're fearful it's going to happen again, and the mistakes that we see the financial service industry making this time, trying to avoid that last mistake, but it's really creating different mistakes, and we'll give you the solution. Right. So one thing I want to say I think is, is critical is that I do think there's a tendency for people to assume these things never happen again. I mean, so I think sometimes when we do these shows, people sort of... You know, just assume, well, that was then. This is now. Look at how great things are. There's no way we're going to have a problem. And that happens a lot with a lot of different things we talk about. I think it's important people understand that the best predictor of the future is history, right? It is. It is, Paul. You're right. And we also have, as Americans, very short memories. I mean, so many people forget the pain they felt in 2008. And I don't bring that up to create fear. We had the pain also in 2001 and 2002, right? We had the fear again here in COVID, 2020, right? We had the fear in December of 2018 when the market was down almost 20%. So you're going to have these types of fears every four to seven years in retirement. So what are you doing to plan your income around these fears, volatilities to prevent making some of the biggest mistakes you can make, and, and, it, and it starts, Paul, with relationship with money, underestimating how different it'll be once they're retired and all they have is okay. the ability to pull money out of this, these that, accounts. And that's hard for people. It's hard for people to understand they will deal with money differently when they're not working than when they're working. Paul, that's the, at the core of why almost 10 years ago we started teaching these courses at all the major universities. It's a seven-hour course, 200-page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to the Retirement Education Foundation. It's a charity. The purpose of this charity is to educate you, to prepare you to and through retirement of so many of the traps, so many of the traps people before you have made and your friends and family are making. If you'd like to register for one of our classes, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240- Eight nine eight one. And we are glad you're with us here for the Retirement Education Hour. No one wants to outlive their savings, right? We've worked so hard. 
for everything we have in our retirement accounts. You want to make sure it lasts. The good news is Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they're here to say, hey, you can learn some lessons from the lost decade. And these are powerful lessons that really could help people stay on track, right? Stay on track for a successful retirement. Yes. So today, Paul, Megan, we're going to go through the exact returns that occurred from 2001 through 2010. And we're going to talk about all the different mistakes, how our industry uses math. I call it, we call it mutual fund math to manipulate numbers to appear differently than what your real results will produce to show you the traps associated with the timing of those returns. When you're taking income out of the accounts, it's the most important. It is the biggest risk to people's retirement sequence of return risk. I swear we talk about it every show. It's because it's the number one risk and we're going to drill it into your head until you figure out you need an income plan. Just investing your money. What is going to drive your performance in retirement isn't what you invest in. It's when you take your money out of your accounts. And hopefully you'll have a better appreciation for that after this show today. And then, Paul, one of the last things I want to make sure we're doing is giving people what the major firms are now forecasting for performance over the next 10 years. It's going to sound a lot like it was 2001 to 2010 and where the industry is pivoting and we think is so dangerous how we need to look at this a little differently with the lowest interest rate environment and the market at an all time high. What do you think, Paul? I think it's a great show. And I think at the end of the day, I think the most important takeaway here, and I think, you know, we talk about this all the time is, you know, volatility is, is not a problem, but volatility is not our friend when we're taking money out. I think people are going to realize when we give some examples that if you make the mistake that people have made, you're going to have serious problems in your retirement. And the best way, really, at the end of the day, the best way to solve this is to get educated, right? At the end of the day, you got to learn. You got to get information. We only have so much time in this radio show. We spend a lot more time in our class. We would recommend you go get educated. Come to one of our classes. You know, we've been streaming them lately, Kirk, because of COVID. If you don't want to come to a class, you can watch it virtually. Or we are now doing small classes at our learning center at local universities. It is $29 to attend our class. It's a seven to eight hour class. Uh, If you want to attend, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com, and you can register online, or you can call 1-800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981, and when you call, you can register. And we will be back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Glad to be here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure to follow them on Facebook. All you have to do is search for Retirement Education Foundation. Also, register. Do it today. Register for one of their courses taught at local universities or online. If you're more comfortable, you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register. Here's that number. Simply call 800-240-8981. When we look at the lost decade, and these are the years between 2001 and 2010, There were several mistakes that people made during this decade, mistakes that people in or nearing retirement made that you say we can learn from. What were some of those mistakes? Well, the mistakes were thinking that you were going to be able to use your conventional investment strategies or even reducing your risk a little bit and just take money out of those accounts to live on and not think you won't outlive your money. I mean, that's the number one is not understanding the importance of income planning and making sure you're taking income from accounts that don't have much volatility. Number one mistake. But what's interesting and why we're talking about this today, and I was pretty passionate about this. I think Paul and Megan were thinking to me, is this going to connect with people? And I hope it does because I feel like we're setting up again for another lost decade. If you listen to Morgan Stanley right now or Goldman Sachs or Citi, They are all projecting a 60% equity portfolio, 40% bond portfolio. That's what most retirees use. The 60-40 model is only going to perform at 3% over the next 10 years. Well, that is very consistent with the 3.6% the market performed from 2001 to 2010. Identical, 
right? And by the way, historically, a six, the last 50 years, if you had a 60-40 allocation, you had performed at almost 7%. So we are talking about half the performance that we've historically seen is what is being projected for the next 10 years, and that just happens to be identical to what happened in 2001 and 2010. So, Paul, what I wanted to do is I wanted to read the literally the returns from 2001 to 2010, and then we can show how similar to what future projections are going to look like. So, here we go. So, in 2001, the market was down 12 in 2002, is down 22%, then 29%, then 11%, then 5%, then 16%, then 5%, negative 37%, 26%, and 15%. Kirk, just to clarify, yep. When you when you said, when you gave the numbers, any number that you didn't say was a negative, yep, it was a positive. That's just right. To be clear, just to You're be clear. exactly right. So if it was a negative, it was negative twelve, negative twenty two, positive twenty nine, positive eleven, positive five, positive sixteen, positive five, negative thirty seven, positive twenty six, and positive fifteen. This is a, just under a total of an eighteen percent real return. So if you had a million dollars, you had a million point one eight million dollars at the end, right? Or if you had a hundred thousand dollars, you had a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars ten years later. But the average return, the average over that ten years was three point six per three point six percent, Paul. That's the mutual fund math we're talking about. Three point six percent versus what your real return was only eighteen percent. Right. You know what's crazy? I look at this and I forget this is not, you know, negative 12, negative 22 is not crazy. No. It's, 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 I mean, when I think of the lost decade, I, I, I forget. I'm thinking, you know, 2001, it was down 30 percent, down 40. We're not talking about numbers that are unrealistic here, right? It's not, Paul. And, and here's the thing with this one, right? The, 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 the dangerous was with this sequence was they lost. There was negative earnings in the first two, two years. years in a row. If you're retired you're outliving your money. If you have a negative return in the first five years of your retirement and you don't have an income plan, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. So this is, this is why I, I, I worry a little bit about the topic called the lost decade. Because I think people think the lost decade, we're not going to lose another decade. The problem here- are you kidding me? <laughs> the problem- well, that's, what more, that's what City and Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are saying. We are, guys. We right, are. Right, But all it really takes is two bad years of negative 12 and negative 22 because the next year was up 29%. That's a good return. It was a great right? return. It's a great return, but still, it was a lost decade. The bottom line is, in the first couple of years you retire, you see a significant decrease in the in the stock market, and you're taking income from those accounts. That's going to cause the problem. So here's my here's my prediction, uh, and it, it, we always take a risk uh, in our industry making predictions predictions on performance. Right. But I'm, I'm not going on a limb. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, all of them say the same the Morgan Stanley say the same thing right so they're saying the next 10 years is going to be similar with a 60 40 allocation that was hundred percent equities by the way mm -hmm. that was not a 60 40 portfolio right. so right so 60 40 they are predicting you're going to perform at somewhere between three and three and a half percent Paul that doesn't mean every year you get three three and a half percent we're going to have say that again I think it, that's the key here say that one more time people use these spreadsheets thinking like right. oh it's going to be a static three percent and I all I need is get three percent that's conservative no it's not what your average is right. it's what the return real return is and when are you taking money out of your accounts if you take your money from accounts that are down in years that they're down you're going to outlive your money so I say that I know the next reflex for a lot of people is I won't take it out. Right. I will. Well, first thing, they're going to be forced to once they're 72 years old with right. RMDs. Right. But they're going to do what so many of the baby boomers are going to do. They've got lots of wealth and they're going to way underlive their means because they're going to let short term market events dictate when and how they spend their money instead of planning. Right. Paul, it's why it's a, we're in the holiday season. And in the holiday season, we give gifts to everyone, all of our loved ones. 
Give yourself a gift. You want to give yourself a gift. Oh, it's also going to help you with budgeting, right? I promise you, because once you realize what it's going to need in retirement, you're going to spend less. But give yourself the gift of education right now and come to one of the nonprofit retirement education foundation courses that are taught at all the major universities right now, streaming them live with COVID. They're a seven hour course, 200 page textbook. We're teaching them almost every other week now. We're streaming them. We're doing small groups in the universities and in our learning center. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Glad you're with us here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors, and that means they are ready to give you an education when it comes to what it takes to plan successfully for retirement. In the 21st century, they teach courses at local universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University, a two-day course or a one-hour deep dive. You can register by calling 800-240-8981, or you can register online, retirementplanningedu.org, $29 to register, and that goes to charity. Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about lessons that we can learn from the lost decade, lessons from the mistakes, right? Mistakes that retirees made. One of the things we touched on, sequence of returns risk. This is just a phrase we hear a lot in retirement planning Sometimes the concept is a little difficult to grasp. I wanted to take some time for you two to explain that. What's the risk here? So let's let's actually, this is great because it is the number one risk to retirees. It's also the risk that our industry, the financial service industry, does not really want you to understand. They sort of ignore. All of you should be aware of this risk. If you're within five to 10 years of retirement or in retirement, you need to know what sequence of return risk is. And you, more importantly, knowing what it is, understanding with real numbers how it's going to impact your retirement. So, great example, the lost decade. Paul, in the first year, we lost 12%. In the second year, we lost 22%. We are now 34% behind. It doesn't sound horrendous. It was a recession. It was actually the dot-com bubble. But let's pretend like, moving forward, that's just a recession, Right, We had a couple of bad years. Down 12% is nothing, right? We're going to have those. 22% maybe a little bigger, but now we're 34% behind. If you're not retired, if you're not retired, meaning you're not taking any money out of that account, you will need to earn 54%, almost 54%, I think it's 53%, to break even. Now, people don't get that. How? Can, I thought I only lost 34%. Why do I need over 50% to break even? Because... When you lose 34%, you have less to recover from. There's fewer shares. There's fewer dollar amounts. You have to have a greater percentage to break back to even. So at the end of the year, at the end of the third year, you could have lost 12%, lost 22%. So you're down 34%. And then in year three, the market goes up 34%. Over that three-year period, you'd have a 0% rate of return. That would be your average rate of return. But you have lost lots of money because you needed over 50% before you break back even. Right. And the problem is. Do you get that? I do. And the problem is that third year, you're still taking money out. Now, right? that was without taking money, I Paul. I get it. I get it. I get it. No, no let's compound that. Right. Let's, let's get there because I wanted you to explain then what happens after. So, so now let's say you actually are retired. And the first year, the market's down 12% and you take out 4% to live on. Now you're down 16% right? You have fewer shares. So the next year, the market goes down 22%. Now you're down 38%. Oh, I need my distribution to live on. So I need four more percent. So now I'm 42% behind. Now I need, I think it's like 70% to break even. That's why if you lose early, the chances of you outliving your money increase by 75%. Right. And Paul, your example 
illustrates they had the next five years. I I, I, so so it, what's amazing is, is that the next year, the third yep. year was up 29%, Yep. which which most of us would say, that's amazing. That's a, that's a really good year. Yeah, but there's still 40% I, behind. I get, I get it. I get it. The point is, we, we call this a lost decade as if this seems so unrealistic. We're talking about one, one sort of bad year. One, you know, we, we, we will agree 22% really is not good. Yep. But then they were up 29%. They were up 11%. They were up 5%. And they're up 16% and another 5%. Five years in a row, the stock market grew. Hold on, 29, 40, 50. They're still not even. They're still not broken. They're still even. not even. And, and then they what? get Wait. crushed. And here's the thing. The problem is they're continuing to take money out. Every year? Right. They, they, oh, yeah. They're way behind even. They're way behind. So so some people are gonna who are driving their cars right now are thinking to themselves, you know what? And you hear this. I hear this all I the time. It. I just won't take my money. I just won't. I won't take my money. I won't. I won't. If the market's down, I won't take my distributions. There's two problems with that, Paul. I get it. I hear it all the time. Paul's nailed it, right? So one is once you turn 72 years old, whether you want your money out of your retirement accounts or not, the IRS is going to force you to take it at about 4% and goes up. At 80 years old, they're going to make you take 6%, okay? Yeah. Whether you want it or not, whether the market's up or down. Now, the second point, it's something Megan was talking about in between our segments here and and she's right one of the things we see so frequently paul is that retirees the relationship with money just changes They're, you're never more vulnerable no one else is paying you you literally have to pay yourself so because of these risks sequence of return risk emotions fear anxiety what our experience is because we work with pretty wealthy clients even those wealthy clients way underspend their means. They will take less because of short-term market events, pandemics, COVID, right? A great example. You've got elections every four years that some, for some reason freaks everybody out like the end of the world's coming. You're going to have an election every four years in retirement. You're going to have a recession every five to seven years in retirement. If you have a plan that maps this out, so that you know how to pivot and manage your income without allowing these short-term events to destroy your plans. It's a freedom that you have all earned working your entire lives for this moment, retirement. It's so, sad. So I, so I think I think the experience you're sharing is meeting people who have not planned and they they allow their lives, they they allow these external events to dictate how they live their retirement life. So, you know, they don't have a plan and the market goes down, okay, for the next three months, I won't take the trip I want to take or I won't do the things I want to do. And the point is, if you allow these external events to dictate your life in retirement, what a waste. When in fact, there's an alternative. Well, there is. The alternative is actually plan out. But Paul, we know that a lot of people think they have a plan. But only 4% of people truly have a plan. So your portfolio isn't a plan. Your spreadsheets right. was taking stat with static returns, taking static income is not a plan. This is why, Paul, this is exactly why we started our courses almost 10 years ago, right? In the university settings, we started a nonprofit designed to help people understand how to build this income plan. The courses are seven hours, 200 page textbook. And we are streaming them live with COVID right now. So if you would like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation and go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Yep. And we'll be back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Glad you're with us today, Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure you're following them on Facebook for lots of great information and resources to plan for a successful retirement. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. You can also attend their courses. You can get registered today by calling 800-240-8981 or go online to register retirementplanningedu.org. We've been talking today about, well, hindsight. It's 2020, right? Many times. And we can learn a lot from the mistakes of the past that some retirees made. I'm interested in looking to the future, Kirk and Paul. What does the outlook appear to be for 2021 and beyond? 
Megan, I, I don't think you even caught it. You said hindsight is twenty twenty, and we're at the end of twenty twenty. <laughs> 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 right? Okay. So it's funny. Um, so yes, twenty twenty one. Actually, twenty twenty one is shaping up to be a pretty darn good year. Now, who? So so I don't want to confuse people. We are fear. There there are many concerns over the. Our whole industry is concerned over the next decade, the next 10 years. In the next segment, we'll explain why, because of low interest rates and in, in, in different variables. And it's important to understand that if you're a baby boomer nearing or in, early in retirement, this is this next decade is going to be an issue. But just talking about 2021, there's been some really interesting things and that has, have occurred. And I think it's really hard if you're watching TV, media, news to get a true pulse on what the economy should look like. And, Paul, like we said, the economy and the market aren't always in line. In fact, they're often not in line. This year was a great example where the economy was horrendous and the market is at all-time highs now, right? Makes no sense. Well, it really does, but for the average person, they can't understand. I think we could have an experience in 2021 where we're going to have an economy that is soaring, and a market that is kind of dullish. Mm-hmm. And, and here's why. Ready? We'll go down the list and I'll let you give me some too, Paul. The things that jump off at, out at me is we have so much pent up liquidity, all time highs of liquidity. There's $90 trillion of global li- liquidity and a tremendous amount of demand. I know some people are hurting, Paul, but there is so much between stimulus, the Fed easing, Free money, literally free money, really, really low interest rate environment, unemployment at really high benefits, the highest we've ever seen. So for many people, more income than they're used to. People's personal balance sheets on the average is way better than it has been in history. I know there's people hurting. I'm not diminishing those people that are hurting. But the majority of people are not. Tons of liquidity. And with that liquidity, then we're coming out of a pandemic that we've been locked down, bored, depressed, emotional purchases, right? And we're going to have a vaccine, Paul. We're going to have a vaccine. It's around the corner. When we have a vaccine and people feel comfortable and safe, oh, goodness, I think we're going to see we're going to see a pretty darn good economy in 2021. I agree. And and I would add to that, the likelihood that- that More QE? I mean, more stimulus. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, no, the, more yes, stimulus. Yes, yes, Because yes. that's coming. Yes, I was. I, I was. I was also going to say the likelihood that the Feds are going to that we're going to see interest rates go up anytime soon is probably pretty low. So the problem is money's pretty cheap, which makes people easier for people to spend, and people are spending right. They're sitting home looking at their kitchens because they have nothing better to do but sit at home, and they're thinking, why not refinance my house, pull some money out, and start spending because interest rates are cheap. So I, I think you know, I think that's. I don't see that changing anytime soon as well. So I think you're right. I think 2021, from an economic perspective, is going to be, for most people, pretty good, right? Yes, I agree. Now, now there's the debate. Paul mentioned something. So most of us, most experts, are less concerned about seeing inflation, interest rates rise, because the Fed is going to do everything they possibly can to hold those, those interest rates down, right? Because they want to stimulate this economy. They want really people spend money they want people to spend money that's right exactly right and so i think my prediction is there's going to be such a demand supply because manufacturing's been slowed because of covid there's going to be a little bit of an inflation hike i think we're going to see a little bit of bump and that's okay you know what guys understand the war on seniors and savers is when interest rates are low and we don't have inflation for seniors inflation isn't a bad thing our industry has convinced you that it is, but it isn't. That just means you can actually make money in your savings accounts, in your CDs, in your bonds, unlike you're making now. And guess what? When inflation goes up, so does equities, right? So inflation isn't the, a retiree's enemy, some inflation. So even if we see that inflation, it might be, I, I, I think we need some inflation. I, I know the Fed like to see a little bit. Right. So, so we set this up. Talking about the economy and the stock market, right? So we just got yes. done saying that we think the economy can look really good. Conversely, though, the question is, if your investments are in the stock market, the question is, what's the stock market going to do in the next year, it's, over it, the next 10 it, years? It's crazy because, uh, Paul, and I know in the next segment, we're going to talk about the next 10 years and what we should be 
what we think you should be doing versus what you're being taught right now to right. do. Right. But and we, I think we should at least at some point talk about valuations. I I I, I, I was think, just going to say, Paul. Uh, We've got I, valuations. I see, you don't understand. We're brothers. I, I, I can read your mind. We are brothers. People, <laughs> we have different last names. We, we I, are I, I know what you're thinking. When I know you I know. Do. So I knew you were going to say You diapered me, bro. I did. I, mean, I, I did. think I you know. have a good idea. Okay, so go ahead. You're going to say. So, right. So it's crazy, right? We're locked down, pandemic, and we have valuations, markets at an all-time high, and we don't even have the vaccine yet. Right. Right? So, right. A, it's probably baked in, guys, right, in anticipation it was not a secret we were going to see vaccines for a little while now, and I think the markets rallied on that on that news in anticipating a pretty good 2021. But we are valuations, all-time high, interest rates. When you say valuations, we're talking about the value of your equities, or your investments. Crazy high. The, 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 pri- the, the price of those versus the amount they're earning is really out of proportion, way out of proportion. Way out of proportion. Right. It's crazy high right now, right? right. So- so this is what was going to set up, I think, for these baby boomers who are going to be just retiring or be retiring uh, in the near future. This 10 years is a very delicate, difficult 10 years to navigate, and, and it's being underestimated by many, right? So we're going to talk about that in the next section. I mean, next, next segment. 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 But we we're, not also, a class. we're not teaching the class right now. Uh, thank you. I know, but that's the whole purpose of the class. That's why we spend seven hours in a classroom at all the major universities. We're also streaming it with COVID. If you'd like to register for one of these classes to understand how to construct your own plan for retirement, $29 donation to the charity, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-240. 8981. Much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Happy to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. If you'd like to get registered for one of their courses that they teach at local universities, including University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, and Michigan State University Novi campus, even Oakland University, I don't want to forget Oakland, you can register today by going online, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Lessons learned from the lost decade. There are a lot of lessons, it turns out, that retirees should take to heart so that you can have a retirement you feel confident about Kirk and Paul, let's keep looking ahead. I asked you what's in store for the next year, 2021. Now I'm going to challenge you. What's in store for the next 10 years, the next decade? Megan, we are so concerned with the language, information, and messaging that our, that the, the financial service industry is sharing with the public right now. You have the Susie Ormans, the Dave Ramseys, you have the Jeremy Siegels. Just about everybody right now is scrambling, pivoting, trying to figure out how to make their 4% rule work, being able to take out 4% a year. Because right now, if they put 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds, that's the 60-40 rule, and take out 4% a year, it's going to fail almost 30% of the time now. It's not going to work. They know it can't work. And the reason it can't work is if you have 40% of your money in bonds, that is paying nothing right now, the lowest interest rates in history right now, the 10-year corporate bond rate is at, it's like 1.98%, nothing. Below inflation, you're losing money when you're investing in bonds right now. It's period, right? Any any shorter-term bonds. So with that environment, how do we create in a, prof, um, a risk profile, an allocation model that gives people the ability to take out enough money to be able to live the, the lifestyle they want in retirement. I, I hear people say, well, let's do 100% equity. Well, so that's it. So the, the pivot has been, now everyone's saying 75% stocks, right, right, 25% bonds. right. Now here's the problem, right? And they're not worried about the problem of how you will feel, behave. All they care about is the technology when they illustrate, when they show you, and they've back-tested, they've run a Monte Carlo simulation, they've stress-tested this 
allocation look it will succeed almost 85 percent of the time that's all they want that's all they care about not how you'll really behave we know after teaching thousands and thousands of people throughout retirement we know how you're going to behave we know that 35 percent of people over the age of 65 years old panicked and went to cash at the bottom of covid missing this entire run-up destroying their retirement 35 so a 60 40 portfolio in a 2008 event is going to lose about 25 percent okay a 60 40 in covid would have lost about 18 to 20 percent uh, 15 to 20 percent let's just call it that if you go 75 percent stocks 25 percent bonds like everyone in our industry is telling them to do now if we had a 2008 event you would lose 42 to 45 percent of your portfolio tell me what you're going to do when you have a million dollars and your portfolio is now worth six hundred six hundred fifty thousand dollars are you going to panic are you going to sell are you not going to go on vacation are you not going to do home improvements what are you going to do and this is retirement isn't about your rates of return folks it's your income plan managing your emotions and avoiding the traps that's what it is. The problem is no one's teaching you the traps. Right, right. So, so, so sadly, all these people are telling you take more risk because that's the only way they're able to be, really ultimately get enough growth in their minds so that you can potentially, you know, have enough income in the future. But what they're not sharing is the likelihood of you panicking when you see that level of volatility is very high. Right. It is, Paul. You, and, go ahead. No, and, and, and we see it all the time, right? If you if you're not confident that you're going to have enough money to live the rest of your life and you see significant volatility, the likelihood that you're not going to panic is, I mean, you're going to panic. People do it all the time. You may not think you, you didn't panic in 2008 while you're working. Right. Right. But, but imagine having no paycheck. Yeah. Someone was paying you. I That's know right. you wear that like a badge of baby boomers right, wear right. like a badge of honor. But now imagine you're paying yourself. Uh, right. Right. Imagine you're paying yourself and you have 75% of your money in equities and you see significant volatility. How do you think you're going to react? That's that relationship with money we're always right, talking about right. that changes, Paul, right? And so, so they're, they're not wrong. 40% in bonds right now is not... At when 60, you say 40, they, the, you talk about the people who are saying... The financial service industry right, to be clear, isn't yeah. wrong when they say the 60-40 is going to no, fail. It will. I mean, everyone is projecting a 3% return over the next 10 years. That's less than half of historical performance. The problem is the solution. The problem is the solution, but I want to tell them why it's not going to work. They're not wrong. It's not good because interest rates are so low. And when interest rates go up, people struggle to understand this, Paul. But when interest rates go up, the value of the bonds you own in your funds go down. You're going to lose money as interest rates rise. If it doesn't make sense for you, you got to come to a class and we will teach you why. But this is one of the biggest traps. So the industry has said, well, Maybe we should do more equities or some alternative investments like REITs, like fractional shares of artwork or classic cars or Bitcoin. These illiquid, highly volatile investments that make absolutely no sense. It's just going to create more anxiety. Kirk, Kirk, I'm confused. Let me tell you why I'm confused. If I'm confused, they're confused. Yep. We just got done talking about how we're going to have the best economy next year. Yep. And you're also saying that. Stock market's not going to look good. Right. Makes sense for that. So I, 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 here's what I would say. Next, in 2021, stock market, and this is my personal feelings yeah. that I, 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 I don't- talk about the next- next. I'm talking about the next, next 10, 10 years. years right? So it, only hand, takes, it only takes a year or two that's the if key. it happens specifically in the first five to 10 years of retirement. If we have a bad year in the first five to 10 years, you are going to outlive your money. You're going to get trapped with sequence of return risk, Paul. That's it. Right, right. That's so, why the class is so important, isn't it, Paul? It is, it is. It's the reason why we encourage people, the more knowledge, the more education you have, the less likely you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna make these significant mistakes and not live the retirement you want. So, so let's talk about the class, right? We teach this, we've been teaching this class for a long time. Normally, we teach this at local universities, University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Eastern Michigan University, uh, Oakland University. Uh, because of COVID, we've been streaming these live, right? There's still some opportunities to come to a, a very small class if you want. It's a $29 donation to a charity to attend. It's about a seven, eight-hour class, about a 200-page textbook. If you want to come to a class, you want to learn how to avoid these mistakes, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can register 
You can look at the syllabus or call 1-800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981, and you can register when you call. And we will be back. There's much more with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. Great to have you along with us today for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, joined by financial instructors Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Don't forget to follow them on Facebook. Simply search Retirement Education Foundation, and you can register for their courses. Kirk and Paul teach courses around the community at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, And Oakland, two days or one day, just a deep dive, seven to eight hours, helping you get more confident about your retirement future. You can register, it's $29, and that goes to charity, at the following website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or if you'd like, you can call to register 800 240-8981. Kirk and Paul, I've learned a lot today about how we can all benefit from looking at mistakes of the past, right? Hindsight's 2020. And we know that in that lost decade, right, from 2001 to 2010, retirees made a lot of mistakes, mistakes that upended their retirement and their success in retirement. So I want to talk about what we can continue to learn and how planning can help us avoid making some of these mistakes. Megan, it's, we're lined up, right? I mean, we just had the longest bull run in history. We're coming out of the greatest expansion in history. And there's a lot of overconfidence, same type of overconfidence we had coming into 2000, same overconfidence that we were going into 2008 with, remember, because we had a couple of years. Plus, plus we just rebounded from a a horrible month in March. So people think this is going to be forever. So there's, so much evidence of this. And here's the thing. Unfortunately, so much of the information you all get to hear from the financial service industry is talking, their generalities. Am I saying that right? Right. You said right. Sort of one size fits all. These are, and, and, and here's the problem is you have to appreciate, and this may surprise some of you, the average baby boomer reti- only retires with about $200,000 saved. The average baby boomer only has $200,000 saved. 40% of our retirees get almost all of their money from Social Security. They don't have other resources. So if you are not one of those averages, you are not the norm just retiring with $200,000. You actually have more saved and you have more resources for retirement. These general rules, these all the general information you guys are reading about constantly isn't for you. It's for them, the average, right? All of you are so unique and specific that can you imagine trying to be an, an expert speaking to the public and trying to cover all, I, we teach classes, it's impossible. It's one of the reasons why our class is eight hours. There is so much nuance to be known to avoid mistakes in retirement. And it's not, I know we say this every, every show, you guys, I know you believe that what's going to drive your success and your performance in your retirement is your average rates of return and what you're invested in. And that's fourth on the list of 10 most important things in your retirement. Fourth, it's not even in the top three. I know it's hard for you to comprehend, but that's why the course is so critical because it teaches you that your income planning is the most critical. When you take income from which accounts at what age? Paul, we know taxes, right? Right, right. I want to go back to income planning for a second. So, so I think people don't really truly appreciate when we say income planning. I think people just think, what is the big deal, right? It's everything. Right. It, it, it goes back to the, the number one. Right. And it goes back to the first five segments we did today, right? At the end of the day, right, if you, if you think your income plan is going to be based on just taking money from your investments, and most of you, that's your income plan, right? That's, that's the average income plan, right? Dividend funds. That's right. Exactly. Right? That's right. Bonds. That's, 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 that's their plan. It's, it's going to fail you, right? At the end of the day, that's going to fail you. It's going to fail you because of all the things we've talked about, because of low interest rates, because if interest rates go up, your bond funds are going to go down. It's either going to fail them, Paul, or they're going to way, way underspend Under, right. their means, which right. we and see not enjoy and, and not live the life they that's want right. to live. Right, right. That's exactly right. Right. So well, just to be clear, when we're talking about income planning, we are actually talking about plotting out for the next 30 years 
what accounts you should take your income from so that you don't. Year by year. Year by year, so that you don't run into this thing called sequence of return risk. That's what we're talking about. That's right. And so, Paul, if legacy is not important to them and they just want the max income, we, we, we're te- going to teach you in the class how to take out seven, eight, nine percent if you're in your early to mid 60s without and outliving your money. That's right. Key. But now legacy is important to you. It's different. So, everyone's priorities are different. And that's why the income plan can help you. It's not your but rate I, of I, return. I'll I, I, I tell you something. Investing you know, is simple, by the way. Almost as important. I think everyone would agree that most likely taxes are going to go up, right? Right. Yes. Our debt is, what, about 105% of our total economy, right? And, and there's still more stimulus coming out. There's more debt we're going to have. Taxes are going up, right? I think most would agree tax planning is probably pretty important, right? There is no simple rule that we can use for tax planning. Paul, we spend probably almost two hours of our time on tax planning, right? I mean, no, seriously, mapping In the out, class. In the class. In the class. Mapping yeah. when, how to fill brackets, what investments create, what taxes. Right. But not, not just being investment tax efficient, but it's income tax efficient, knowing when, how, where, Roth conversions, using charitable strategies, using QCDs. There are so many strategies that are available. Why don't you know? Because our industry, the financial service industry, isn't interested in spending time building you a tax efficient plan and they're afraid of the liability. My CPA will do it. Yeah. Your CPA will do one year, maybe two years. Right, right. Your financial advisor will tell you to go see your CPA. Your CPA will go tell you to talk to your financial advisor. No one wants to do it because it takes a lot of time and there's a lot of liability. So we're going to teach you in the class. That's the purpose of the class. So again, one last time, you guys, people who've been listening to our show for a long time knows that this is an educational show. We are not selling anything. We don't talk about our personal practice and try to convince you to come meet with us. That's not the goal here. We're trying to get you educated to and through retirement. That's why we teach these classes. We teach them at all the major universities. That's why we started this nonprofit organization. And if you'd like to attend one of these seven hour courses at one of the major universities or we're streaming live now, you can take a $29 donation to charity and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.